Hello, and welcome to part two of Programming 101, presented by the Office of Student Activities and Recognized Student Organizations. My name is Bill Torville. I am the Assistant Director for Campus Programs at Minnesota State University Mankato, which means I work primarily with the Impact Programming Board, uh, and I am one of the Campus uh, Programming Specialists here at Minnesota State University Mankato. Um, the previous video kind of covered some areas of how to get your events set up, but now we're going to cover a little bit about <coughs> risk management, um, contracts, and how to promote your event. Uh, first one is, when do you need a Minnesota State University contract? You need a contract when someone, anybody, is doing a service for MSU Mankato. <clears throat> Examples would be a speaker, web, someone's designing a website, bartenders, entertainers. Um, in particular, too, if you are, if you are uh, renting items that are being set up on campus, by someone other than someone from MSU, you are going to need a contract. Um, you need a contract primarily to help make sure that first A, everybody's on the same page about payment, cancellation, um, terms, and what who's providing what and what are you providing as well. So there, that's all clearly laid out. Second is that it provides some liability and coverage um, for the university in case something were to go wrong. Um, that's, that's two of the primary reasons, but finally, the, the real reason is that we're, the, we're a part of the state at Minnesota State University Mankato, and we have to use state contracts. You cannot sign anybody else's contract. So, how do you know if uh, who does a contract? Um, primarily, the organization advisors will be responsible for being the negotiating party. But if you have any questions, contact Diane Hiddle in Finance and Administration. Um, her extension is 6623. So you can give her a call in Finance and Administration if you have any questions about contracts. Uh, they do request the contracts three anywhere from three to six weeks prior out, just because we do not accept digital signatures, which means they have actually have actually have to send four paper copies of the contract to the person. They sign it, return it, it gets signed by everybody here and their brother. And you cannot do anything on campus until a, a, um, a contract is signed on here. There is a guide on contracting on their, it, on their website. So if you go to the Finance and Administration website under contracts, there is a guide and guidelines what to do. If you do not use a contract, you get uh, there's some paperwork you need to fill out and it's not really lo looked highly upon it places the university and yourself at more risk um, in case anything were to go wrong so that's the spiel on contracts if you are renting something make sure that she reviews the rental agreement before you sign it first so there are some people in town we we normally rent from and they have a rental agreement but make sure that she does see it first um, generally if you are a student you cannot sign those on behalf of the university so do check with Diane or your advisor um, or Ashley Strawman with in the, within the student activities office on who can contract <clears throat> Next one is a little bit on risk management. So um, if you're having an event that someone is running in, or if you're having a 5K, you're, you're blocking streets, you're doing anything that kind of may put someone at an undue risk. So basically, if they're going to come and there might be some risk of them being harmed in any kind of way, this is an opportunity for you to check with uh, Chandler Holland. He's the Director of Environmental Health and Safety and Risk Management. Um, his email is there as well as his phone number. Uh, if you have any questions, um, he is the guy to talk to. So if you're bringing a um, dunk tank on campus, if you are doing a 5K, if you're doing a volleyball tournament, he's the kind of guy you want to check in with. <clears throat> Excuse me about uh, what you need to do to make sure that everybody's going to be safe and healthy. Um, his role is basically prevent and reduce injuries to students, um, those coming on, and just minimize liability to the university. So, for example, if you're buying a bunch of food that you're not going through Sodex, so, you know, he may require it to be bought from a vendor who's got liability insurance. So, um, really how this is accomplished through him is um, doing the special events checklist with a minimum of 30 days in advance. So, um, if you need any consultation with code or fire safety lines, officials, stuff of that nature, making sure that the insurance is correct and that he will also help you with liability forms. So if you're doing any kind of event where people might get hurt, you have them, he'll help you out find some liability forms, which you should be filling out. Um, primarily, there's two ways that risk management wants to make sure people are safe. Actually, three. First one is through waivers. So if you bring an inflatable on campus and they potentially might get hurt, want to let them know that, hey, you know you might get hurt, 
that's on you. You can choose not to do this. That's your choice, not ours. Uh, and that is done through a waiver. Uh, second a way is to eliminate behaviors that might be too risky. For example, doing a um, Tough Mudder on campus where we're shocking people. Well, maybe we'll take out the 10,000 volts because we don't want anybody getting hurt. Um, and the third way is through insurance. Um, as a state of Minnesota, we require $2 million per occurrence insurance or a $1 million with a $2 million cumulative umbrella. So that is a big deal. If you're contracting with someone, an inflatable vendor, someone's coming on campus doing go-kart rides, you have to make sure they have $2 million per occurrence with and to, or a $1 million with a $2 million cum, uh, cumulative umbrella. If they don't have that, you can't contract with them, period. If they don't have it, there's the option to buy additional insurance through Tulip program it is expensive be prepared it is not cheap at all so it is very expensive do be prepared for that um, any questions on insurance waivers liability contact Chandler Holland in environmental health and safety final piece of the video here is a little bit about knowing your audience and who are you going to be marketing to that is the most important part so when you're marketing your event there are some options for you to uh, market to uh, students you can reserve a-frame spaces in the centennial student union you can reserve tabling spaces in the centennial student union you can reserve um, anything in the centennial student that's reservable is through the event and meeting services what um, office in 219 uh, you can reserve tabling spaces outside of Karkovsky Dining Hall that is done through the McElroy front desk um, and then there's opportunities to um, to promote on the mall. If you're going to be doing anything um, such as chalking the sidewalks, um, setting up a stand outside of Taylor Center, um, handing out flyers and stuff of that nature, uh, you do need to reserve that through the scheduling office, again through event and meeting services, primarily just so they know you're doing it. So that all of a sudden they don't get, oh, there's this person doing this X, Y, Z in a corner. Like, well, you have no idea what's going on. So you just really need to let them know you're going to do it for the most part. And usually nothing is um, declined for that nature. Um, but when you're knowing your audience is important. So if you're going to be do, um, promoting to students primarily uh, on campus and off campus, you know, you're going to want to keep things short and sweet. They have a lot of stuff going on. Um, obviously, you can reach out through them so, through social media, but that is being proving to be more and more difficult unless something goes viral. And going viral is not easy. So I really encourage face-to-face -face contact, getting out, getting and talking to people. That's going to be your most effective way uh, to reach um, the student population. If your population is off campus or might be in the middle age, boob, uh, baby boomers. Um, primarily, whether they are um, are reached is through advertising, though. So through your traditional radio, newspaper, and um, television ads is a great way to reach that generation. They tend to want more information, so it might be a poster that has a description of what's going on. They want to know everything that's going on versus just a real quick and um, short, sweet answer that the millennial generation is looking for. Um, if you have questions um, on how to reach people, you can contact Public Relations um, or Dan Benson at extension 6838. Um, he can help you and that office can help you with graphics, with um, press releases, with stuff of that nature. Post, uh, posters are posted through, um, must have a stamp, which you can get in CSU 220, the administration office, or student, our student activities office at CSU 173 to be distributed on the distribution boards. Res Life does have its own policy. I encourage you to check that out on their website. Um, they do accept some posters in the distribute for you, but you can't just go posting things in residence halls willy-nilly. Um, and as well, you can't go walking around residence halls to individual rooms uh, soliciting. You cannot do that. That is not allowed with their policy. So a little bit about knowing your audience and um, and really um, how to reach your audience. Um, I encourage you um, to go to the leadership toolbox, which is mnsu.edu backslash activities backslash toolbox. And I actually have it's about a 10 to 15 minute podcast and one sheet on promoting at MSU. It has all those details in there. And really, how do you take advantage um, and how can you reach students to promote your um, event here on campus? Um, but with that, um, 
this is the end of the video and end of the presentation. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at any time. My email is william.tourville, T-O-U-R-V-I-L-L-E, at mnsu.edu. Or you can stop into the Student Activities Office at any time. That's 173 Centennial Student Union. And any of the full-time staff will be able to answer questions for you. But on that, thanks for listening, and have a good day.